Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this video I'm going to be explaining the difference between a pointer and a pointer reference. So I've already gone ahead and I've written some code here to save us some time in the tutorial. And I also started a diagram of some of the things I've got going on in this program. So the first thing I've done is I've created an integer variable called box1 and that's represented by this guy right here. I said that box1 holds the value 1. So let's go ahead and put a 1 in here. Okay, so there's our 1. And then box1 lives at some address and we're just going to say that that's address A. This address is actually determined when your program runs, but we're just giving it some sort of name that we can reference for illustrative purposes. The next thing I do is I create a new integer variable. I call it box2 and I place the value 2 inside of box2. We're saying that box2 lives at address B and inside of box2 we're going to place the value 2. Okay, so box1 holds the value 1 and box2 holds the value 2. The next thing I do is I create this pointer called G pointer. And so that guy is right here. Here's G pointer. And currently we haven't assigned him anything to point to. The next thing I do is I declare a function prototype. So this pass by pointer function is the one I'm going to call to demonstrate what happens when we pass a pointer into a function. And this function, pass by pointer reference, is what I'm going to use to demonstrate what happens when we pass a pointer reference into a function. So see the difference here is, in this case, I'm passing in an int star for an integer pointer, and here I'm passing in an int star ampersand for a integer pointer reference. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to the main program here. Now inside the main program, we create an integer pointer, we call it p, and we make it point to box1. So what we're doing here is we're saying store the address of box1 inside of the pointer p. So when we place an address inside of a pointer, that effectively makes the pointer point to the thing at that address. So what this line right here is doing is it's creating this pointer p right here, and it's saying put the address of box1 inside of p, and so that means we take this address right here, we place it inside of the pointer p, which effectively makes p point to box1. So that's what our program looks like at this point. The next thing we do is we say store the address of box2 inside of g pointer. So g pointer is right here, box2 has the address b, so we're going to place b inside of g pointer, and that effectively makes g pointer point to the thing at address b, and the thing at address b is box2. So here's what the diagram looks like for our code up to this line right here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to just print this title to the screen. And later in the tutorial, we'll take a look at what happens when we pass p inside of the pass by pointer function. And we'll also look at what happens to p when we pass it into the pass by pointer reference function. But for now, we're going to ignore this. And we're just going to look at the current conditions before we pass p into either one of these functions. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to compare the thing that's inside of p, which is an address, and we're going to say if p contains the address of box1, that means that p is pointing to box1. Otherwise, if p holds the address of box2, that means that p is pointing to box2. And if neither one of those are the case, then that means that p is pointing to another box. So we don't expect to ever see this print in this tutorial but it's good to have it here just to make sure we're covering all of our bases. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at G pointer. If G pointer contains the address of box one, that means that G pointer is pointing to box one. Otherwise, if G pointer contains the address of box two, that means that G pointer is pointing to box two. And if neither one of those are true, that means that G pointer is pointing to another box, which we're not going to expect in this tutorial, but we're including this line just to make sure we don't get something unexpected. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to print the value inside of box one, then we're going to print the value inside of box two. So without calling the pass by pointer function and without calling the pass by pointer reference function, let's just take a look and see what this prints out here. So we'll make sure this file is saved. And here I've got my terminal open to the folder where this file lives right here. I'm just going to compile it real quick by saying g++. And the name of the file is ptr. And I'll just push tab and it will autocomplete for me. I've named this file pointer versus pointer reference.cpp. And that's what this file is here that I have open. So I'm going to compile it real quick. If I do an ls, we see now that we have our code file in this directory. Plus we have this new executable that was created from compiling here. 
Now let's run the executable dot forward slash a dot out. And this is what we see. P is pointing to box one. Okay, that looks right here. G pointer is pointing to box two. That looks correct as well. Box one contains the value one. That looks good. And box two contains the value two. So that looks good as well. So now let's jump back to our program here. And this time we're going to uncomment this line. And what we're doing now, we're passing P, which is this guy right here, into the pass by pointer function. So let's go to the pass by pointer function and see what happens. And so when we pass it in by pointer right here, what happens is, is we passed in P, but it actually creates a copy of P named PTR in this case. So let's update our diagram to see what this looks like as we enter into this pass by pointer function. So we pass in P, what we actually get is we get a copy of P. So we get a new pointer and it's named PTR and PTR basically is a copy of P. It contains the address A, so we put the address A in here and that effectively makes PTR point to the thing at address A which happens to be box one. So this is what our diagram looks like once we enter the pass by pointer function by passing P into it. Now we have the star PTR which is the dereference value of pointer and that means the thing that pointer is pointing to make that have a value of three. The thing that the pointer is pointing to is box one, so box one gets the value three. So box one now has the value three. Then the next thing we do is we say make pointer equal g pointer. So what that's saying is make pointer contain the same thing that g pointer contains. Well g pointer contains the address of box two, so we're going to put that inside of PTR here. And effectively what that does is it causes PTR to now point to the thing at address B, which is box two. The next thing we say is the thing that PTR is pointing to, this is the dereference value of PTR, make that a four. Well, PTR is pointing to box two, and we're going to make that equal four. We're going to print that the pass by pointer function has been called. So let's go back to the terminal. Let's clear the screen, and we'll make sure our program saved. I've already done that. And then we'll recompile the program. So I'll just push up a few times, get back to my compile instructions, I'll push enter, and then I'll run the executable dot slash a dot out. So here we're printing the current conditions. We can see that we've gone through the pass by pointer function, and we can see that p is pointing to box one. So that's this guy right here, p is still pointing to box one. g pointer is pointing to box two, so that's this guy, so he hasn't changed. Box one contains the value three, okay, that looks correct, and box two contains the value four. So we can see that we haven't changed the thing that P is pointing to, and we haven't changed the thing that G pointer is pointing to either. So we have effectively updated the values in box one and box two in our pass by pointer method. So let's go ahead and get rid of this guy, and let's see what it looks like when we pass by pointer reference. So going back up here now, we're going to comment the pass by pointer call out, and this time we're going to pass P into the pass by pointer reference. I'll save this, and then we should probably update box one and box two to be what they used to be. Since this time we're not calling the pass by pointer function, we never get the three and four in these boxes that get set by that function call here. So going back, the only thing in this run when we compile it is going to be box one contains one and box two contains two, so let's update that. Okay, so the only thing we're doing different with this run is we're calling the pass by pointer reference call this time and we're passing P in. P happens to be pointing to box one and we're not going to change any of the output here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens in the pass by pointer reference call. So what we have here is we're creating a reference to the pointer we're passing in by adding this ampersand. So what this is doing is instead of making a copy like the pass by pointer did, we're creating a reference to the thing that was passed in. So the reference just happens to be a pointer. And so in this case, since we passed P in, we now get this PTR ref as a reference to this same pointer. So essentially what happens here, we pass P in and we get this new way to access the pointer here. So we can use this pointer and we can use it by calling P in our main program or in this function call, we can now use it as PTR ref. So the difference here is this pointer was a copy of the pointer passed in, 
whereas this pointer right here is the same thing that we passed in. So now we're actually manipulating the same pointer that we're calling p. So this is saying put the value 5 into the thing that pointer ref is pointing to. So this is the dereference value of pointer ref. We're saying make the dereference value of pointer ref 5. So the dereference value, once again, you do by star and then the name of the pointer. That means the thing that the pointer is pointing to, make that value in this case, 5. So that's what happens here. Now we say pointer ref equals g pointer. So whatever's inside of g pointer, put that inside of pointer ref. g pointer contains the address b, which is where box 2 lives. So we're saying put the address b inside of pointer ref. So now pointer ref contains the address b, and that's where box 2 lives. So effectively, this makes pointer ref point to box 2. And it just so happens that since pointer ref is just another way to call this pointer, that also means that p is now pointing to box 2. So the next thing we do is we say make the thing that pointer ref is pointing to contain the value 6. The thing that pointer ref is pointing to is box 2. Box 2 now gets the value 6. And then we print that the pass by pointer reference function has been called. So let's make sure our file is saved again. Go back up here just to double check that we've got the pass by pointer reference being called, and we do. So that file saved, let's go back to our terminal, clear the screen, go back to our compile command, enter, run our executable, and we see that this time we've called the pass by pointer reference function. It says p is now pointing to box two. So that's this guy right here. So he has updated now to be pointing to box two. G pointer is pointing to box two. Okay, so that guy hasn't changed. Box one still contains the value five. Okay, that's what we expect. And box two now contains the value six, which is what we see on our diagram as well. So the main difference between passing by pointer and passing by pointer reference is that when we pass by pointer reference, if we modify that the thing that the reference is pointing to, we're actually modifying the pointer we passed in. That's what we see in this last case. However, if we go back here, we can see that when we just passed it by pointer, we make a copy and then at the end, P is still pointing to box one and G pointer is pointing to box two. Since the pass by pointer was just a copy, P is still pointing to the same thing that it pointed to before the function was called. Whereas when we pass by pointer reference, as we see in this diagram, we can actually modify the thing that the pointer points to when we pass by pointer reference. So anyway, that's the big difference between pass by pointer and a pass by pointer reference. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to suggest more topics that you'd like me to cover. Have an excellent day, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.